Hello Internets. I'm here to talk a little bit about testing turbines, testing wind turbines, how to do it, how I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it this way. Here's a little action shot to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I've been studying and working on vertical access wind turbines for about a decade, and I've learned a lot about uh, what works in testing and what doesn't work so well. So, first thing to keep in mind is you've got to have a reliable measure of wind speed in. If you don't know what the input of your turbine is, you can't really compare it to anything. So up here you can see I'm using a sensor that's like this one. It's by a company called Vernier. Um, they seem to be a pretty reliable, strong little sensor. The one problem with them is that they, they don't turn to face the wind. They have to be faced into the wind. So in this case, this rig really only works effectively if there is no crosswind. If the air is still and I'm just driving forward and the air is going straight through that sensor. So I have to wait for days that there's no wind occurring in the background or very little wind occurring in the background. I may hook up another sensor to deal with that, but for now that's where it's at. Um, the next thing you have to know in testing a turbine like that is once you know the wind speed in is how fast is the wind turbine going. So in this case you can see up there there's a green toothed wheel sort of like this blue one and so what's happening is that toothed wheel is passing past this optical gate sensor. So every time it passes a tooth it essentially sends a signal and, uh, and the, the, um, the data collection system I'm using can uh, measure the difference between those signals and figure out how fast the turbine is turning and whether or not it's accelerating or decelerating and all that kind of lovely stuff. So this gives me wind speed in. These give me um, turbine speed. The next issue is, um, the energy the turbine's capturing, if it's capturing some amount of the energy that's blowing through it, what happens to that energy? I'm hoping most of it gets turned into heat here. In this case, I'm doing a few different things. Because I've built my own alternator for collecting power from this thing, and I'm not sure how efficient that alternator is. Some home build alternators are less than 50% efficient. I did do some tests, but in the end, I'm not an electrical engineer and I'm not really sure what they meant. And so if I only measured the, the watts collected by the alternator, I might actually miss out on the fact that my turbine is working well, my alternator may not be. So what I've done, if you look right into the front of that thing, you can see the orange bar sticking out and the, and the black box attached to it. That's a load cell, which read how hard is the turbine twisting on its base. That aluminum shaft that goes up inside the turbine actually is fixed. It stays still. It stays still except that it's tied to that load cell. The load cell is what fixes it. So the turbine revolves around that shaft. And when it does that, if it generates any electricity in the alternator, it tries to twist the alternator. And so the aluminum shaft on that load cell tries to turn when the alternator is collecting energy. And I can measure how hard that twist is. What's the total torque on the system? So all of the bearing losses, any losses in the alternator, none of that matters according to the twist, how hard, how much torque is it putting on the shaft. Uh, so as long as I measure that and I know the speed of the turbine, essentially speed times torque, speed times torque equals watts. So this allows me, even if my alternator is inefficient, to know what the real efficiency of the system is. Measuring all these things is a bit tricky and it's not that any of these sensors or any of these tests are 100% perfect. The idea is just to get them as accurate as I can. 
this system right here, the turbine goes in on these three inputs. So the three three phase output from the turbine goes into these three things, goes through these rectifiers and is measured here by this current sensor and this voltage sensor. So this is a board I've made these hand wound resistors on uh, and I'm just working to figure out what the ideal load for the turbine is and I do that by changing the resistance that it sees. Something interesting that adds a bit of complexity to this is that the load that a turbine can carry changes with the speed of the turbine or the speed of the flow into the turbine. So as the flow into the turbine doubles, or in this case, as my vehicle speed doubles, the amount of energy available to the turbine is actually eight times as much. The turbine speed will only double, but the amount of shaft power available is eight times as much. It's a cubic function. So my goal in this testing is to find out what is the maximum shaft power available at a variety of wind speeds. And so I'm using that load bank to produce different loads, which I test at different wind speeds. Once I know the ideal load for any particular wind speed, I can calculate the efficiency of the turbine. How much energy in the wind is it converting into shaft power? My last turbine reached around 30% efficiency, which is very good for a small vertical access turbine. Right now I'm really just collecting data, so I'm not trying to optimize yet. But essentially this is the heater which uh, dumps all of the energy collected by the turbine. All of these sensors that I've shown you are collected, connected to a little black box or a, a little green box by this Vernier company. And that collects all the data and sends it to this laptop where I can review it like it's a spreadsheet and, and uh, modify it and learn from it. If you'd like to know more, follow me on YouTube and I'll keep you up to date. Thanks very much. So thanks very much, internets. Live long and prosper.